Typical conventional time management workshops only use one word for different aspects of time. We need some clarity about the different kinds of time. Here are some descriptions. Physical or event time is the continual occurrence of physical and experiential events. The word event is used to describe something that happened or is happening now, like getting up in the morning or noticing that you're hungry. A second face of time is symbolized by the faces of clocks and watches, different tools for measuring event time. Different cultures measure event time in different ways. These measurements allow us to compare and coordinate our activities. The third phase of time is the one that is probably most important for our happiness, although it's also probably the phase that is least understood and most undervalued. Here we will call it personal or psychological time, though it might also be called experienced time. It includes all the different ways we feel or experience time. We may feel time move quickly when we're having a great time. During some of the best moments of our lives, things seem timeless with little or no feeling of time passing. We feel time drag or pass slowly when we're bored or having a bad time. We feel anxious about time when it seems we don't have enough of it. Our feeling of time passing sets up familiar problems. Time pressure, anxiety, overwhelm, and the feeling we don't have enough time. Rather than measuring or mirroring an external flow, our feeling of time passing is just the aggregate result of resisting past negative experiences. A composite of repressed energy the feeling of time passing is independent of external physical events and speeds. In other words, our feeling of speed and time pressure is a product of past resisted experiences and not a measure of current external forces or events. A very important part of personal time for Westerners is called linear time a sense of horizontal time flow among past, present, and future that moves at the same unchangeable speed for all of us. Finally, though it's a kind of lack of any feelings of time passing, timelessness can also be considered a kind of personal time. Have you studied time management? What does time management focus on? events and tasks? Since American European cultures focus on measured time and events in physical time, time management in Western countries has most often become simply a matter of choosing, organizing, and scheduling events. If you studied conventional time management, did you find that it sometimes made you more nervous or anxious or pressured about time? Although time management seminar graduates have been able to accomplish more as a result of their training, there is growing recognition that they still feel like they don't have enough time, and some feel like things have worsened. If you studied conventional time management, do you no longer have time pressures? Conventional time management usually presumes that time flows independently of us. Does conventional time management assume that time is external, outside us, independent of our consciousness? Yes, most seminars say something like, we all have the same amount of time. End of story. No mention that there are different types of time, nor that there are different ways to experience time so peak experience is ignored. Conventional time management focuses only on that lowest quality pit performance domain of human performance on the periphery of the circle. 
in discussing the improvement of fourth generation time management training over the third generation, time management teacher Stephen Covey said, concerns about quality of life are just as likely to come from someone with a high level of time management training as from someone without it. The fundamental problem remains. This requires a paradigm and an approach that is a fundamental break with less effective ways of thinking and doing. But Franklin Covey's training presumes and is built on top of the linear time paradigm and so it still doesn't handle the basic friction of time passing. However, conventional time management training doesn't need to presume the linear time view and limit time management's possibilities and usefulness. So conventional time management doesn't directly handle the basic pressure and anxiety of time flowing nor does it define or clarify different types of time. To my knowledge, the only course that focuses on transforming our experience of linear time is Mastering Linear Time from the TSK Association. But what can conventional time management do? It addresses what we do, not how we do things. Conventional time management can help us plan and identify goals and priorities, break down projects, schedule, track progress, coordinate resources, and deal with procrastination. Most people will need conventional time management skills to optimize their productivity and well-being and to reach the higher levels of time mastery. Here are the steps for mastering conventional time management. Clarify and write down your long and short term objectives in major areas of life. Keep the objectives current. Break projects down into doable tasks. Update project plans as necessary. For all identified tasks, set priorities and estimate the time required so that you're aware of what's important and when things are scheduled. Here are additional steps for mastering conventional time management. Schedule periodically and create to-do lists and calendars with scheduled tasks and appointments. Do the tasks focusing on top priorities and doing things in the time allocated. Periodically ask Lakin's question, what is the best use of my time right now? Change tasks as appropriate. Whenever it's useful and appropriate, you can learn these skills in Mastering Time 103, available at manage-time.com Here are some limitations of conventional time management. As mentioned earlier, conventional time management doesn't directly handle time pressure and the feeling that we don't have enough time. On the contrary, by leaving the underlying linear time flow untouched, it presumes that a certain level of pressure is a natural phenomenon that we must adapt to. Conventional time management can't adequately describe time wasting. It usually simplistically categorizes tasks on the presumption that they either have inherent value or lack it but with the possible exception of those things we're doing but don't really want to be doing, time wasting can't really be defined in terms of specific tasks. Not addressing how we do things keeps conventional time management from recognizing different levels of functioning with different degrees of wasting time. Conventional time management also can't adequately describe interruptions, which are not always bad. 
not addressing how we do things keeps conventional time management from recognizing different possibilities for being interrupted, some of which aren't disruptive. Conventional time management seminars sometimes emphasize distinguishing what feels important versus what feels urgent or pressing. Urgency is a feeling that seems to be an aspect of linear time's momentum, which, again, is not directly addressed by methods of conventional time management. Although we can categorize things as urgent or important, this does little, if anything, to reduce the momentum associated with the task. However, with appropriate methods, the sense of urgency can be directly lessened. Here's the third slide on how to master time. In addition to using the methods of conventional time management, to master time, we need to continually monitor how we are doing things. We can use the idea of different levels of involvement, which might, for example, be defined in terms of awareness, concentration, and energy, and try to deepen involvement whenever possible. You can use the question, am I completely involved in what's at hand? Or, am I timelessly involved? Specific ways of improving involvement can effectively handle procrastination time wasting, interruptions and disruptions, urgency, and so on. Progress can be measured in two ways. Birds need two wings to fly. They can't fly with one wing. One is not more important than the other. They're both necessary. Similarly, it seems that to measure progress in life, we need to periodically consider two questions. One question is, am I doing the right thing? A second one is, am I doing things right? Another way of stating the first question was provided by time management guru, Alan Lakin. What is the best use of my time right now? Most of us have numerous tasks and objectives that we wish to accomplish. Among all these things, what is best to do right now? Occasionally asking this question is very important. This conventional time management question helps us clarify what to do. Another way of stating the second question is, am I timelessly involved? in what I'm doing. This inner time management question helps us clarify how to do things. It asks whether we are doing things in an optimal, timeless way. People report that in peak experiences of all kinds, there is no sense of time flowing in a way that feels out of control. So it's helpful to ask Randall's question periodically. Am I timelessly involved in what I'm doing? If not, if we're not totally involved, or if we feel time passing in a way that has even a slight bit of pressure or anxiety, there's room for improvement in both productivity and well-being. With methods of conventional time management and inner time management, there's a wide range of possible ways of relating to time, many different levels of mastery of time and time stress. Six levels appear here and on the next slide. Struggling against time. Time is outside us and we race and struggle against it. We are victims of pressure, overwhelm, and anxiety, thinking that it's normal and unchangeable wondering about ways to relate to time. Our relationship to time has loosened up and we're wondering about the possibilities. 
We no longer feel consistently pressured and anxious. Seeing time as an ally, not an opposing force. We're beginning to see how our experience of time is created and are able to transform some time pressure and anxiety by various methods. Allying with time. During breaks, we're able to reduce time stress by 50%. We see different levels of time and how they're related. Empowering time. While working, we can reduce time stress by 50%. We are aware of subtle pointings, including a self-other duality that can lead to linear time experiences. The time, space, and knowledge association offers courses that can help reach this level. Abiding in time. We never let time stress get established. We abide in the peaceful yet energetic eye of our whirlwind of activities.